Greetings, Guardians. The Hijabi Gamer here. And no, unfortunately, I cannot say good morning, Guardians, because it's not morning. It's late afternoon, maybe even evening here in New Jersey. Unfortunately, as I said, my work hours are making it pretty difficult for me right now to make long videos in the morning. So I will, I promise, make sure to have the Zer videos done Friday morning. Those only take a couple of minutes. They're pretty quick to make. It's the reset because I like to give you the challenge of the Elders bosses, the legendary weapons, and I'm still... I really want to try and make the armor, legendary armor rolls videos. So I just uploaded a video soloing Challenge of the Elders and I can now give you the bosses. Anyway, it's Tuesday, late Tuesday, but it is Tuesday and we're here for another Destiny 1 weekly reset. Awesome. Anyway, first off, like I said, I do have the Challenge of the Elders bosses. As soon as it comes up, I will let you know. And the Nightfall makes me sad. Anyway... For this week, for Crucible, we have combined arms, aka 6v6 with vehicles, which is kind of cool, I know, and people have told me you don't need to use the vehicles. Um, I don't know, I just, I wanted to use the vehicles, but sometimes they feel a little clunky, it's just me, but they're still cool. So 6v6 v with vehicles, vehicles are cool, um, yeah. And you get a Treasure of Ages box and 10 Legendary Marks. So the only thing that worries me is it's 6v6, which means 12 people. I guess they would go as maybe 10. Maybe they should drop it to 4v4 um, just because, like, allow it to go through with even 4v4 simply because, you know. But then that's expecting Bungie to. Anyway, that would be cool. Treasure of Ages box, good thing to have. You get Silver Dust, ornaments, etc., etc., etc. Anyway, next we have the weekly story playlist, which is one of my favorite things in Original Destiny. I wish they would bring back to Destiny 2. I know you could do Witch Queen campaigns, but it's not the same. Plus, I still wish they would bring back this. Because I like doing story missions. Anyway, that aside, weekly story playlist is the best way to grind legendary mark. Farm, I mean farm, not grind. It's farming. Farming legendary marks, because you can do it up to five times, and each time you do it, you will get between 20 and 35 legendary marks. And the first time, you will get a Treasure of Ages box, which again, silver dust, ornaments. Just remember, you can only carry 200 legendary marks at a time. So if you have 200 and you want to do this, you need to spend some, um, maybe on one of the legendary weapons, when I make my legendary weapons video. Um, I, will, I might make it today or tomorrow, because that one takes like an hour to make and i've just anyway so what are the story i believe it's going to be uh the first missions because the last one was iron yeah earth and moon are the early missions in destiny the first mission the only mission you cannot replay in destiny is the first mission so if you want to replay that you have to create a new character that's the one where the, your ghost wakes you up it's the same with uh destiny 2 the homecoming mission, at least when Destiny 2 first launched. I hear the new player experience isn't very good now, but um, yeah, don't get me started. I'm really salty because I like the Red War. I know a lot of people didn't, but I actually enjoyed it. So we have Earth and Moon, which means basically missions on Earth and the Moon. You know, that wizard came from the moon. Yeah. For fun, look up the uh, Ghost Water Bucket Challenge. Ice Bucket, Water Bucket Challenge is kind of cool. It has the voice of Peter Dinklage. Anyway, Heroic. Enemies appear in greater numbers and are more aggressive. You will always have that because you're playing these missions on Heroic difficulty. You've pissed them off. You aren't even bringing cookies. They're pissed at you, so there's going to be more of them. They're expecting you now. Next, you have Specialist. Special Weapons Damage is favored. I am liking the fusion rifles these days, so uh, Telesto is awesome. Then you have Ironclad. More enemies have shields. Yeah, well, story play missions aren't that hard. They're fun. I like them. I really do like them. And these are some of my favorites. Lots of nostalgia with these. You know, remembering when I first started Destiny. The multiple times I started Destiny on different characters. Yeah. I, I did, okay? I like, I like the early missions. I liked replaying Destiny. There's something fun, that start of beginning Destiny, where you have the whole game ahead of you. Even if you've done it multiple times, you're like, here goes nothing. You have an adventure in front of you. That's why I love starting Destiny from the beginning, which is why I actually have a level 12 hunter. Because I just love that feeling of when you first start. And every green, you look, ex you get excited for every green engram that drops. And every blue one, you're like, oh, I got a blue one. So I, I enjoy starting Destiny from the beginning. And that just feeling of adventure ahead. But I don't feel that with Destiny 2. 
Anyway, that's the story playlist. Then we have the Siva Crisis Heroic, which, by the way, you will... I, I'm surprised. Every single time I've done the Siva Crisis Heroic, I have been matched. I did not expect that, but I have been matched. So, you get... You have... First off, you get... Um, up to three times, so uh, ten ti three times each time you get ten legendary marks. Plus, the first time you do it, ten, uh, you get a Treasure of Ages box. So up to 30 legendary marks and a Treasure of Ages, excuse me, box. So again, um, you get uh, Silver Dust, Ornaments, Cosmetics, etc. Um, as I said, I've always been paired, which I'm surprised, but... That there are people playing Destiny, and I'm always seeing new people, which is awesome. Um, heroic enemies appear in greater numbers. I mean, it's called Siva Crisis Heroic, so expect heroic. Arc burn, arc damage from many sources greatly increased. Uh, Berserk minions of darkness won't flinch even after massive damage, which I'm going to warn you. That means the Cabal are going to be very difficult. I mean, not impossible, but these aren't the weakly pathetic Cabal in Destiny 2, whose shields you can shoot through, or basically shoot them in the center and they drop them. These are Cabal where you have to shoot them in the shoulder or the foot, and if they and they will flinch, and then you can shoot them in the head. When Berserk is in effect, they don't flinch. Yeah, it's a lot of fun when Berserk is in effect and you are fighting Cabal. But I enjoy the challenge. I prefer these Cabal to Destiny 2's baby weekly Cabal. Yeah, Dominus Gaul, you heard me. Your Cabal suck. Your Red Legion sucks. The Grineer, the Grineer in Warframe have better shields than your mighty Red Legion. I'm going to continue to mock them because I think it's pathetic. And finally, Brawler. Guardian melee damage is greatly increased, which includes, it, which includes the Hunter's throwing knife cool so berserk arc burn you can always do with go with say oh my baby zalo cipricel i love you zalo we miss you in destiny to zalo risk runner is not zalo supercell okay okay even if the specs are were identical which they're not but even if they were it's still not my baby Zalo Supercell, okay? That's like, just, that's like getting a tabby cat that looks like Buster and saying, this is Buster. No, it's not Buster. It's my bait, my Zalo. All right, that's the cipher. The weekly nightfall strike. <laughs> you wanna know what this is? This is the one from Rise of Iron. You know, the one with the ogre and the priest shooting the void weapon at you. Dear God, I hope it's not void. Because I remember doing this as a Wikely, as a Siva Crisis Heroic. It was Siva, and it was Void Burn for the Siva Crisis Heroic, and everyone kept abandoning the strike because Void Burn with that isn't fun. But so Weekly Nightfall Strike is the you know the one that has the massive ogre that you can't kill and the priest who you know the ogre with his brain ripped open and you his eye thingy is being used as a weapon by the priest. Yes. The Splicer Priest. Yes, that's it. That would be interesting if you went into church and you saw a Splicer Priest. That would actually be pretty cool. Anyway, you have Epic, Heavily Shielded, and Highly Aggressive. Enemies appear in greater numbers. Then you have Specialist, so Special Weapon Damage is favored. That's good. Chaff, Player Radar is Disabled. Which is great, because this is one of the few times where you don't want Chaff, because Chaff helps you keep track of the ogre. Yeah. But it's not that bad, honestly. As long as it's not Void Burn, which clearly it's not. Still, that guy's a pain in the rear. Fresh troops. Some enemy squads have been fortified with additional reinforcements. Which means, you know, you know he has more bad enemies with him. And finally, Ironclad. More enemies have shields. Yeah. Still, I prefer the strikes from Original Destiny to the strikes in Destiny 2. Let me know. Am I the only one who feels like there's more weight and fun and just creativity in these strikes than in the ones in Destiny 2? All right, so that's the Vanguard. Also, a reminder, I always make sure to remind people this. Remember to pick up the weekly Nightfall Strike bounties from Commander Zavala. You have to go to Commander Zavala to pick these up. These are not on the bounty board. There are three of them. And then there are a whole bunch of them on the bounty board. The ones on the bounty board. These are the ones with Zavala. All right. 
See, there's the sunrise, which earn a gold tier achieved medal in the nightfall before time expires. All right. So don't forget, these are the ones with Zavala. These here are the ones on the bounty board. All right. So that's why they're different. These you have to get from Zavala. Okay. So don't forget that. Um, that's the weekly nightfall. Then we have Challenge of the Elders, which, by the way, my first time running it, I was 600 points short. So just a reminder first, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to pick up your card, your Elder Sigil scorecard from Varix in the Reef. The goal is to get one round with 30,000 points and then a total cumulative score of 90,000. It could be three times. It could be 10 times. It doesn't matter. The first, you just at least need to get one round with 30,000. Once you get to 30,000, Varix will give you a gun, which is why I've always wanted the 30,000. I want the gun. Then you get with the 90,000, you will get a piece of armor. But we're talking about the gun, okay? So as you can see, I was like 600 points off. Now, the modifiers are airborne. Players deal more damage while in the air. Um, melee kill bonus, which this includes the hunter's throwing knife. So I always recommend knife juggler. Precision kills with throwing knife immediately reset its cooldown. So when you use, as I've reminded people, all right, when you use the hunter's throwing knife and you get a precision kill, first of all, it will automatically reset the cooldown. So you basically, if you constantly get precision kills with the throwing knife, you will be able to just keep throwing your knife. In Challenge of the Elders, you will get the points for the precision kill and for the melee kill, which means you'll get the melee kill bonus and the precision kill point. So this is awesome. That's why I always recommend the hunter's throwing knife for melee kills and precision kills. And then you have here juggler. No ammo drops for your equipped weapon, which is a good thing and a bad thing, which I, when I just did it. <laughs> so if I sound like I didn't know about juggler, I really wasn't paying attention to the modifiers. I just knew that it was a melee kill bonus. Um, so I will sound confused when I'm not getting ammo while I'm doing the solo challenge of the elders. Um, this is both a good and a bad. On the bad side, you have to constantly be juggling your weapons. On the good side, you will get more heavy ammo. So I noticed when I was doing it, I was getting more heavy ammo. Because if you're using your primary weapon, you will not get primary ammo. You will get secondary and heavy. So you'll get more heavy ammo, more secondary ammo, but you need to rotate your weapons. Um, the bosses for Challenge of the Elders are Taken Cabal, so um, Norusk. Servant of Oryx. Um, remember, there's that area. If you watch, you'll always see I'm always standing in that area. Be careful of his thump attack. Because if you're too close to the edge of that, he will still get you with his thump attack. And watch out Watch out for his darts. And the phalanxes. But because there's no berserk, they aren't as hard to kill as if, if berserk is in effect. Um, and the uh, throwing knife will work. Especially against the... Um, the Scions, the Taken Scions. Um, the second boss is Vex. Um, the, the, the Mind. It's a giant Minotaur in the middle of the map. Be careful for the push attack. Um, pretty easy. You know, all of them come through. Um, and the third boss, which is interesting. I've, said, I've seen this happen. It's rare, but I've seen it happen. You have Taken vex which is a piece of cake um i mean i did die once because they have those massive attacks where if you kill them they just um they will get one shot with the throwing knife just they're fast and watch out they need to be facing you um there are a couple of times you'll see i i was I made some dumb mistakes but i was 600 points off which was the most frustrating part um so finish your card that's challenge of the elders awesome challenge of the elders i love you know it's funny i still love challenge of the elders um i have more fun in challenge of the elders than a lot of stuff in destiny too um which you'd think interesting anyway then you have the weekly featured raid which is heroic gulgoroth challenge oryx challenge and war priest challenge that means it's um king's fall um i don't know i really want to do raids i really want to do raids uh, original destiny raids um 
just before I go, um, what's interesting is on um, um, I have been to Archon's Forge and I have found people in Archon's Forge, um, which is kind of cool. You know, I remember when Destiny 2 dropped. No, before Destiny 2 dropped, when Destiny, there was no Destiny 2. It was still hard to find people in Archon's Forge. Now, I remember one YouTuber saying that the trick to finding people in Archon's Forge is when you go to the tunnel, walk. Don't run to the room because it gives time for other people to load into that map as well. Um, so instead of running, and sometimes if you walk back again to the main room, that the one, you know, the entrance to Archon's Forge, and then walk down the tunnel back to the, you know, the fight area, you might find people. I was surprised to have found people in Archon's Forge, but it was awesome. It was a lot of fun. Archon's Forge is great. Um, and uh, I love seeing more people playing Original Destiny. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with other Destiny people. And uh, I hope to see you in the tower.